He is a badass. So what is the story of Django Fett? The Can Croissants presents Star Wars Lore Episode 34, The Rise of Django Fett. Django was born on Concord Dawn and grew up alongside his sister Arla. His homeworld was in the Mandalorian sector and because of this many joined the Mandalorian ways. A civil war broke out between the true Mandalorians and the Death Watch and it spilled onto Concord Dawn. It was during this war that the still young Fett had the traumatic experience of watching his father be tortured by the Death Watch leader. Ultimately Django's parents were killed and his sister was taken by the Death Watch as Fett fled. He escaped the planet alongside the true Mandalorians and with no family he decided to join them. The true Mandalorians came face to face with the Death Watch again and in this fight Django came face to face with his parents killer. After a scuffle he took revenge by killing him. The Mandalorian leader Jaster Muriel was impressed by Django and chose to raise him as if he was his own son. Into his teenage years he fought alongside Muriel and became a squad commander. During his first mission leading a squadron, the Death Watch leader Vizsla killed Jaster. Not only was the mission unsuccessful, but Django lost his father figure. The Mandalorians needed a new leader and Fett was chosen to carry on Muriel's legacy. Fett carried out an act that made him both famous and infamous. He killed six Jedi using only his feet and fists. This was just a little before Fett took revenge for Jaster by killing Vizsla. With the death of the Death Watch leader, the civil war came to an end. However, with no war to fight and with no trusty comrades to fight alongside, Django had to leave his post as Mandalorian leader. He chose to become a bounty hunter since he was skilled with weapons and had mercenary experience. Soon after, Fett caught the eye of Darth Tyrannus, who was very impressed by the bounty hunter's skill. The Sith asked Django if he could be the template for the Republic's clone army, to which he responded yes but only if one clone could be made without genetic tampering. This clone would become his apprentice and son who he believed would revive the Mandalorians. Fett was very fundamental in the design of the clones. Not only were his genes used, but he designed the clone armour, which explains the likeness to his own. He also oversaw the training of 100 clones. They would become the most skilled and elite soldiers in the Grand Army. Django was ordered to kill Naboo Senator Padme Amidala. He teamed up with Zam Wessel, but the mission failed and Fett had to kill Zam to hide his identity. However, the poison dart he used was traced by Obi-Wan Kenobi to Kamino. The Jedi discovered the cloning facility and Django, alongside his son Boba, tried to escape as they didn't like Kenobi's presence. This led to a fierce battle where Fett just escaped with Boba on the Slave 1. A tracking device Kenobi threw on the Slave 1 led the Jedi to Geonosis. Obi-Wan was later found however and sentenced to death in the Geonosis arena. Django and Boba were present in the arena during Obi-Wan's death sentence. During the event the Jedi and the clones came to rescue Obi-Wan, Anakin and Padme. The Jedi Coleman Trebor tried to kill Count Dooku but Django dealt with him and focused his attention on Mace Windu. It was during this fight Boba watched his father be beheaded by the Jedi. Just like Django, his father was killed, but his legacy would be continued. In case you missed it, on Wednesday I released a video with details of a question and answers video, so do check that out. Remember to vote for next week's episode by liking one of the two comments below. If you want to learn more about someone or something from the Star Wars universe, leave a comment. And for more Star Wars lore, keep it locked here to the Kyrgyzans. What's all this noise? A, a battle! Oh, there's been some terrible mistake! I'm programmed for etiquette, not destruction!